HubSpot, it's all-in-one marketing software, a little bit like your iPhone. Hi, uh, Brian Halligan, uh, co-founder of HubSpot. I thought we'd start here. This is sort of the, the Facebook wall, and it's sort of ordered by when you started HubSpot. So this is me, Brian Halligan. My title is overhead, and I don't even have a head. This is my co-founder. This is the first employee. And so whenever we hire a new employee, now we fill this wall up, we go to the next wall down. This is a little bit more of the Facebook wall over here. And so the, well look, who's the last person to join here? I haven't met Dolly yet, but Dolly is our latest employee. She's probably employee number like 305 um, on the wall. We won a lot of awards at HubSpot. The ones that I am most psyched about are 2010 and the 2011 Best Place to Work in Boston. Very surprised and very honored we won those two awards. Amazon is really going to start hiring here. I, thought that, I think that'll be an interesting place to work. Um, there's some startups doing really well. Scavenger is doing well. It's a company called DataZoo is doing well. Demandware, Brightcove is doing well. Kayak. Those are some of the places I would look if I were a young guy starting my career. The birds of a feather kind of flock together. There's a number of forums where the, the startup community hangs out. I'm, I'm in a um, something called 12 by 12 by 12. The governor started it. It's 12 CEOs want to back 12 new startups in 12 months. And I'm on there with, uh, with a lot of the, the, the CEOs of, of great companies in Boston. So there, there is a bit of a community of, of uh, entrepreneurs around here. This is the biggest conference room. This is where we have like company meetings and we, this is where we film. We have a live TV show called HubSpot TV that we run every week that's terrific. We invite anyone in the community to come in. All right, so guys, we're here today for a special announcement. What yes. is it? Uh, well, today we're announcing our new book, Marketing Lessons from the Grateful Dead. Uh, comes out next week, and uh, today, very excited. We kept it secret for long enough, and we're announcing it today. So I wrote a book about marketing lessons from the Grateful Dead, and they were very clever marketers. They played a lot of concerts, and they allowed people to come in and record the music. And when they recorded the music, they said, go ahead and bring your recording equipment in, record whatever you want, distribute it to as many people as you want and all of that music uh, became free and it became their way to sort of distribute their content. And when people heard the content, they really liked it and then they started coming to the concerts and they built this really unique business model around free content. And that's sort of the essence of HubSpot actually. It's a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, grateful debt in it. I'll be honest with you, it was a bear to write those two books. It took a long time and a lot of effort. The good part about my writing the books is I had been thinking about them for a long time and I've been blogging for a long time. So it was really about taking all the stuff I've been thinking about and blogging about it and just getting them on paper. And we have this marketing machine behind us. We have hundreds of thousands of Twitter followers, hundreds of thousands of Facebook fans, hundreds of thousands of subscribers to our blog. So we use our leverage to sell the books. So we're much more likely to get a return on that time invested. So our books did very well as a result of that. I don't think it's for everyone. It does take a lot, a lot, a lot of time. Um, and you have to get kind of lucky. The book's got to be really good. You got to get lucky. You've got to have some marketing reach to pull it off. What's up? Hey. How are we doing? Hi. We have a large amount of trust in our employees. Um, we have very few policies. Whenever there's a policy, the policy is pretty much, you know, three words. Use common sense around talking on social media or talking on the internet. Same policy, use common sense. And so we're trying to build sort of a postmodern culture. And part of that postmodern culture is to eliminate hierarchy and have very few layers in the organization. It's really empower employees and, and, and entrust them to do the right thing. Um, we have no vacation policy. We have no offices. We're trying to really send a message that it's very transparent, very few layers, empower the edge of the organization, trying to build something really modern. And a little bit of what inspired us for that is the television show Mad Men. It's a 1950s culture. It's all the men have big offices, corner offices with couches in them, and they have their martini trays, and they have their ashtrays, and uh, all the women are secretaries. It's just like very, very, very old school, and it's like, that's just not the way to run an organization anymore. Uh, companies created post-internet, power should be in the hands of everyone. You should give information to everyone. Everyone should be able to make their own decisions, and we're trying to embrace sort of a postmodern culture here. The new workers, the millennials coming into the workforce have a very different concept of what it's like to work inside a company. They're motivated by very different things than people my age, I'm a Gen Xer, are motivated by. I was just happy to have a job out of college. Um, these folks have options and they want to learn a lot. They want to move around to different parts of the company. They want to be very entrepreneurial. Um, they want to have work-life balance. They want to have trust. They want to really have authenticity in their daily life and their job. And so we're trying to sort of create 
create a culture that's really friendly to the millennials. Uh, we don't care at HubSpot culturally where people work or when they work. They can work at home, it's fine. They can work on vacation, it's fine. We, we sort of did this no vacation policy because everyone who's on vacation is checking their iPhone all day anyway. Let's just forget about the concept of vacations and let's eliminate our vacation policy. Let's eliminate all paperwork and just trust that the employees are working all the time. This shows the early days of HubSpot. Darmesh and I and our first employee, Patrick, and this is the number of keys they issued. Every orange person is new keys, so it shows the growth of employees over time. This is our revenue line, which is really soaring up. You want to have a lot more revenue than, than employees, that's for sure. But uh, yeah, we started with two, two, three. We hired our first employee pretty quickly. We made a very controversial decision recently to get rid of all the bad food, all the Cheetos, all the Fritos, all the crap and so it's only healthy food. About half the people in the company have applauded the decision, half the people are ready to string me up because they're so mad at me. And this is like the hangout room. No one's got an office in HubSpot, and so this is a good place to come and relax. And what I like about this room is the couches. I'm a big personal believer in naps. You take a little 20 minute cat nap after lunch, grab a cup of coffee, and you are ready to go. So this is where I sneak off to take a little nap. And I encourage the employees to take naps very few do. I don't get why, but very few employees don't take naps. We've got the world's most active wiki, um, where employees are writing about all kinds of things in the wiki. And there's interesting articles in the wiki. N no one has any problem writing anything on the wiki. It's very transparent. So for example, someone may write a wiki, wiki article that says, if I were CEO, I would dot, 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 and then write like a list of the things that that employee would do. So it's very, very transparent. Um, Everything goes in the wiki. My, my board meeting decks go on the wiki. All our financials go on the wiki. Any discussion is sort of hashed out in the wiki. It's a very, very uh, transparent organization. My day changed a lot recently because we hired a chief operating officer. And the reason we hired a chief operating officer is I'm not particularly good at the day-to-day -day sausage making. My role has changed a lot. And I spend a lot of my day talking to customers and talking to potential customers. Um, and then I write a fair amount. I write a column for Inc. I write for our blog, stuff like that. We have an acronym to describe our culture, and we interview for it, and it matches M-A-T-C-H-E-S. M is we like to hire inbound marketers, people who are geeked out about marketing and Web 2.0 and Twitter and Facebook and blogging and all that kind of stuff. We like people who are very analytical, who like spreadsheets, who like numbers, who like regression analysis, stuff like this. We like folks who are totally transparent. So don't hoard information for power. Um, be very transparent about what you're doing in your daily life. C is we're constantly changing. So people who can't put up with constant change, it's a very tricky thing for them because we're always changing, tweaking, changing, tweaking, changing. H, we like people who are very humble. Uh, that's the one thing that people will get really mad about, my co-founder in particular, if someone's a little bit being cocky or overly bravado about some success they've had or the company's had, that's a no-no for us. We want to be very humble. And we think HubSpot, yeah, we're doing very well. Um, we've had good success, but we measure ourselves in terms of what's Google done, what's um, Facebook done, what's Amazon done. We want to be like one of those companies. So to us, there's no reason for hubris. We're very, we feel like we're in the first inning, second inning of the baseball game. E is we, <laughs> it's effing effective. <laughs> PG version. Uh, even though we've got sort of a laissez-faire culture, everyone's sort of got a number on their head and everyone's got to deliver. And we tend to, to push out, you know, the bottom five or 10% will get pushed out every year. So you have to make your numbers and really deliver. And S is for scale. So we like people who think big, want to build something big and special. No one-off deals. Everything's got to scale in a very big way. Yeah.